Hello boys and girls, welcome to Starting with Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today's story is about a family who had some problems. So I'll be interested to see what that story is, and we have a really interesting sharing time, and our craft is going to be super fun with Miss Megan, and of course, our activity time with Miss Amanda, you wouldn't want to miss that, would you? So you got to watch through the whole program. And don't forget to watch for the announcements because there might be an announcement that you won't want to miss today. So watch till the announcements. But before we get to any of that, let's get to some singing. Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Jesus calls upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it and talk it and live it and give it a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Jesus calls upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it and talk it and live it and give it and teach it and preach it. 
search it and know it and show it a sermon in shoes. Hi boys and girls and welcome to another page in God's great book of nature. I'm going to ask you some questions and you give me a thumbs up for yes, a thumbs down for no, or a thumb sideways for maybe. Ready? Here it goes. Question number one. Have you ever seen one of these? Question number two. Have you ever seen one of these in your house? Question number three. Have you ever smelled one of these? Chances are many of you are familiar with this little guy because he can be found in 44 states in America and in places all over the world. If you know his name, you know he lives up to his name, for sure. If you've ever accidentally squashed one of these, you know why they're called what they're called. It's their only defense mechanism. That means it's the only way it knows how to defend itself when it feels threatened or in danger or when it's being attacked or about to be squashed. So what is this thing and what is its defense mechanism? You probably guessed it by now. It's a stink bug and they spray a stinky spray that stinks. The most popular around here is the brown marmorated stink bug. Marmorated means marbled. It's an invasive species, which means that it was brought over from its original country or it tagged along somehow from its original home to somewhere else. It flourished in its new place and overpopulated. Now it's hard to get rid of them. The stink bug is considered a pest and it makes a mess of your garden. They're vegetarian and they love pretty much any fruit or vegetable. It has this antenna thing called the proboscis, which it uses to puncture the fruit. And through that, it squirts in liquid chemicals that dissolve the fruit. And then it uses the proboscis again to slurp up the dissolved fruit. Oops. Well, he's not as clumsy as I am, but the worst part is that the fruit looks good on the outside, but it's ruined on the inside. When it's under pressure or facing a problem, it releases a liquid from its gland in its abdomen to try to solve the problem. A smelly liquid. And just a little bit of that smelly liquid causes a big stink. An awful smell. A hideous odor. So whatever you do, do not squash it or you'll be sorry. You'll be very sorry. All this stinky mess reminds me of Jacob in the Bible. Boy, did he make a mess of things when he felt under pressure. He tried to solve his problems on his own, and he ended up causing a big stink. It also reminds me of Joseph's brothers. What a huge stink they caused when they felt jealous and tried to solve the Joseph problem on their own, huh? A real stinky mess. Until next time, boys and girls. I hope that when you're under pressure, you don't release a stinky odor by trying to solve problems on your own. Instead, take those problems to Jesus and watch him solve it. Easy peasy, no problem, and no stink. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And for your assignment, head out to God's nature and try to find bugs. I'm sure that won't be difficult at all. I can't wait to see those. Adios! Mmm, I got it. It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight is a picture sent to us by Hannah, location, Tennessee. I can almost feel the peacefulness as you take it all in. It reminds me of God's still small voice that we would hear loud and clear if we just took the time to stop and listen. Thank you, God, for guiding and instructing us. And thanks, Hannah, for sending this in. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. Don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing of something you find in God's wonderful nature and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it. Miss Michelle, what are you doing, you may ask? Well, I may or may not be reading ahead. That's right. You remember last week when we had a bit of a cliffhanger? 
Esau was coming and he was not happy with Jacob. And Jacob wrestled with Jesus and Jesus promised to be with him. Let's find out what happens next. And don't worry, yes, I will share it with you. And if you were listening to our podcast this week, you already know it happened. I hope that you check out our podcast at www.startingwithjesus.com slash seedpod to learn more about God's word. Let's pray. Dearly Father, thank you so very much for your word, the Holy Bible. Thank you for writing it for us, using all different people to write it, but to have that message of love woven all the way through it. Please send your spirit to be with us now, and thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, that's right. Esau is coming, and you can just imagine everybody gasp as he saw Esau headed toward Jacob. What would happen? Esau's men were all there. Jacob's family and his men were all there. And what happened? Well, Jacob had sent gifts ahead of him, right? And he had tried and tried to make this meeting less stressful for everyone. And Esau had actually had a dream from God that angels were guarding with Jacob and that he should not mess with Jacob. And so when Jacob met Esau, he bowed down, not once, but seven times. And dun, 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 they gave each other a big hug. Bet you didn't see that coming, right? And they were so happy to see each other. Wow, can God change lives? Yes, God can change lives. In fact, Esau tried to give the gifts back to Jacob that he had given him, and Jacob said, oh no. And then Esau said, well, I can travel with you and protect you. And he's like, well, no, he didn't quite trust him completely yet, apparently. Um, he said, no, but thank you, and we're happy to see you again. Um, and God told Jacob something. He said, go to Bethel. Go to that place where you saw that dream of the ladder, right? There, God called Jacob to live differently and to make some changes, and he did for him and for his family. And he called him to worship God and for God to be his God once again and to remain his God forever, right? Sadly, at this point in our story, Rachel, that beloved wife, died. Now, by this point, Jacob did have 12 sons, right? And he still had Leah, but he was so sad because this was his precious wife, Rachel, who had passed away. At this point, too, Rebecca, his mom, while he had been gone to Laban's house, had also died. So he didn't even get to say goodbye to his mom. That was super sad. And when Jacob returned, he was able to help out his dad as his dad was getting quite a lot older. And later on, as people do as they get old, Isaac died, too. Jacob and Esau, though, went together and buried their father. Wow, that's pretty cool that they could get along to do that, right? Now, how many sons did Jacob have? 12. That's a lot of sons, right? And sadly, 10 of those sons were making some bad choices. Um, Joseph and Benjamin were making better choices. And Joseph, once in a while, would tell his dad what his brothers were doing that was bad, which we might call a tattletale. Now, is it okay to tattletale if something's dangerous or something that's not safe? Yes, that's definitely a good time to tell but um, I don't know how much what Joseph was telling that he should have or shouldn't have, but he did tell on his brothers some, which led them to not like him. You may remember the coat of many colors that Jacob made for his favorite son, Joseph. Once again, we have favoritism creeping into the family, I tell you. And they were super jealous of that coat. They didn't have anything special like that. Then Joseph had some dreams, and they were from God, but mm, maybe he shouldn't have shared them. I don't know. Um, in that dream... There was different sheafs of wheat like this, all tied together, right? And in the dream, there was one sheaf that stood up straight, and the other ones all bowed down to that one sheaf. In fact, there were 11 other sheafs, which the brothers could deduce was them. In another dream, stars and the moon and the sun bowed down to the one star, Joseph. So they were beginning to like him less and less and less. Do you remember what happened? One time when he went to find them, they threw him in a pit, in a deep, deep pit, like an abandoned hole in the ground. And then later they decided to sell him for 20 pieces of silver to a passing um, group of traders, um, Midianite Ishmaelite traders. He, they decided to sell him. And how sad, he pleaded with them, please don't sell me, please my brothers, but 20 pieces of silver. And he was off to Egypt. Can you imagine how much hatred there was there and how much jealousy there was going on there that they would do that to their own brother? I can't even imagine. Now, of course, Jacob was devastated. They told him a fib. They said that Joseph died, and that wasn't true, because Joseph was on his way to Egypt. And while Joseph was on his way, he made a choice. In his heart, he made a choice, and that was to always love, trust, and obey God, no matter what. 
There's a word for that. We call it faithful. He chose to be faithful to God no matter what. And he was also super polite and helpful and a hard worker on top of all that. But he also was feeling sad. He was human. He was feeling very sad and lonely and alone. I guess that's lonely, right? He was double alone. And so he got to Egypt and he was sold to a guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar really liked Joseph. And Joseph proved himself to Potiphar and he made him in charge of Potiphar's whole house, hold everything. Until Mrs. Potiphar told a lie about Joseph and that got him put into prison, which was really a bummer because Joseph hadn't done anything wrong. But in prison, he once again was a hard worker. He was faithful to God. He was loving and kind to the other prisoners. He was helpful and polite. And the prison warden, the person in charge of the prison said, wow, I'm going to put you in charge of the prison. That probably made a lot less work for him, didn't it? To have one of the prisoners in charge of the prison. That's how much he trusted him. And through this all, through all of this, Joseph still trusted God. Wow. That's being faithful, isn't it? While he was in the prison, he made friends with a lot of the prisoners, and two of them were the butler and the baker from Pharaoh. They had both been thrown into the, to the prison because Pharaoh didn't like them, and or something they had done, and they both had dreams. You want to check that out, um, both in our podcast and in Genesis chapter 40 to learn more about that. To sum it up, though, the butler was freed, and when he got freed and got to go back to the palace, Joseph begged him, please don't forget me and tell Pharaoh about my situation because it's not right that I'm here. It was not fair that I was put here in prison. But guess what? The butler forgot. And so Joseph spent two more years in prison working, working hard until one day. And we're out of time for this week. So you'll have to come back next week and listen to our podcast in the meantime to find out what happens to Joseph next in this amazing adventure of faith in God. I hope that you enjoyed today's story. Until next time, start with Jesus by exploring his word. Welcome once again to Craft Time. I'm very glad that you joined me. Now, at our house right now, it is springtime and we are out enjoying our garden and getting things planted. And you know what? Sometimes it can be such a fun gift and a way to share Jesus by giving a plant or um, a flower or something to somebody that you love, maybe the pastor at your church to encourage them, or maybe an elderly person at your church, or even your mom and dad. So today we are going to make a fun little plant pot. We're gonna decorate it, and we're going to fix my plant's problem. Can you see, can you see inside my plant? I'm dumping a little bit of dirt out, but can you tell what the problem is? If you can't see it, I will tell you. My plant has a problem. It is dry, and if I don't water my plant, what's gonna happen? That's right, it is going to die. Now you learned about some family problems in your Bible story this week, didn't you? Yes, and you know what? Jesus has given us everything we need to solve our problems, and he helps us know that if we give our plant a little water, it will grow and thrive. So we are going to make our little pot this week. We're gonna decorate it, and then maybe you can give it to, like I said, somebody at your church or even a parent to help encourage them that God gives us everything we need to help solve our problems. So what you need, and I just have this piece of paper down so I don't get paint on my table. You need some paints, whatever you want to decorate it with, whatever colors. You need a paintbrush, and I just have this little plastic container so I can put that in. So. First off, I have my little container, my little plant pot, and you can get these wherever you like. And I think today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put some polka dots all around my pot. What do you think? Shall we try it? Okay. So one of my favorite colors is purple. So I'm gonna start with purple. So I'm gonna just put some polka dots all over on my plant jar. And you could do a whole scene or you could do polka dots or whatever you like. And you just do your best, even if it doesn't gets off a little bit, that's okay. I almost got my jar painted. And you could keep going. I'm not gonna go all the way around, but I just like the purple. So I'm gonna stop with my purple little dots. Can you see that? So 
So I'm gonna take my little plant out. Oh, it's so dry. I'm gonna put it in there and then I will water it and give this as a gift to somebody. So next time, until next time, I want you to remember to start everything you do with Jesus. And by giving this as a gift to someone to encourage them, you will be starting your outreach with Jesus. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you so much for that craft time, Miss Megan, and for that Bible story, Miss Michelle. Now, it's time to review last week's questions to see if you got them right. So let's see if you got them right. Shout out to Skylar, Joseph, Connor, Drayden, Niabue, Isaiah, Luquath, Azariah, Anea, Sarah, Markyan, Faith, Anea, Julia, Denny, Michael, Decide, Paul, Maria, Amy, Neon Gath, Sano, Andrea, Eben, Hannah, Oren, Choo Choo, Matthew, Audrey, Hope, Nisi, Ivan, Ruby, Lizzie, Kaishan, Caleb, Giovanni, Hadassah, Ellie, Nana, Heidi, Mercy, Ashley, Mayjay, Arthur, Noah, and Aliyah, Alyssa, Christian, Chudier, Dangtut, Owen, Robin, Mia, Benny, Elnathan, Nelson, Eli, David, Benji, Dom, Zui, Lisa, Jimena, and Elijah. Great job answering your questions. It's time now for our new questions. Now, make sure that you have a piece of paper and a pen so that you can write down the answers and send them to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. So go grab that piece of paper and pen. If you don't have it, go ahead and pause the video and then we'll wait. You can come back and then start it again so that you can write down those answers and send them to us. Are you ready? Question number one. How many sons did Jacob have? How many sons did Jacob have? Question number two. How many shekels of silver was Joseph sold for? How many shekels of silver was Joseph sold for? And question number three. What is a word that you would use to describe Joseph? Now there can be lots of answers for this one, so not just one answer is right. But what is the word that you would use to describe Joseph? You can send us your answers at answers at startingwithjesus.com. Our memory verse today is found in Matthew 2820. 20. I am with you always. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Bye. Happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Have a happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Matthew 28, verse 20. Bye, happy Sabbath. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Happy Sabbath. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Bye, happy Sabbath. I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Happy Sabbath. Today's memory verse is found in Matthew 28, 20. It says, I will be with you always. Bye, happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Happy Sabbath, friends. I am with you always. Matthew 28, verse 20. Happy Sabbath, friends. I am always with you. Matthew 28, 20. Feliz Sabado. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Bye, happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Matthew 28, verse 20. Happy Sabbath, friends. I am with you always.
Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And go I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, verse 20. Bye! Happy Sabbath! I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Happy Sabbath! Bye! I am with you always. Bye! Happy Sabbath! I am with you always. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye-bye. I am with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Bye. Happy Sabbath. I am with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath. Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath. I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. Bye, happy Sabbath. Have you ever made slime before? Well, we're going to make some magnetic slime today. So, we're going to start with two tablespoons of baking soda in a fourth cup of water. Would you stir this for me? Yes. Okay, stir really well. Do you want to put the food coloring in or yes. do you want to stir it? I want to do it. Okay, you put the food coloring in and I'll keep stirring. Now we're going to put some glue in. Clear glue is what works best for this. I'm just going to take this whole lid off because we want to put about half that container in. Okay? Go ahead and turn it upside down and squeeze it right in. Okay, you can tell this definitely looks like slime to me. What about you? <laughs> So we're going to put a little bit into this bowl. Slimy, slimy. And we're going to mix it with some iron filings. These are like little pieces of metal. Or it gets black. <laughs> it does kind of change the color, doesn't it? Now. Let's see if our slime is magnetic, if it reacts to magnets. Put all this to the side. And I brought some magnets here, a few different kinds. So let's start with this one. So we put it along the side. Do you see what it does? No. What's it doing? What's it doing? <laughs> is it pulling the slime to where it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Let's put some of this slime on the table. <laughs> okay. What do you think will happen if I move the magnet ear, the slime on the table? Can I pull the slime over? <laughs> oh! Did the slime jump onto my magnet? Is that pretty cool? Yeah. <laughs> can I try? Yes, you can. Here, try with this one. 
It's jumpy mad. <laughs> what if I were to put a magnet right in the middle of this line? What do you think would happen then? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Look at it climb. You know, we're like the magnets, and God's like the magnetic slime. He's drawn to you. He's with you wherever you go. He shields you. He protects you. He covers you up. And God will never let you go. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad you were here. Now, at Starting With Jesus, we have a special program for juniors. And it's a daily program that they can listen to their Bible lesson on. We also have a coloring page that they can download weekly. Now this coloring page is a little different than our regular coloring pages in that you don't get to go back and re-download coloring pages you haven't had before. So you only get the one chance during the week to download that week's coloring page and to color it for that week. So make sure to check back weekly so that you can download and color that week's coloring page. You can find that if you go to startingwithjesus.com slash juniors. That's startingwithjesus.com slash juniors and you'll be able to um, see all the different things that that program has. There's audio parts, there's um, things you can send in, and there's a coloring page you can download. So make sure to check it out. And don't forget our VBS program. You can participate in if you send an email to us at vbs at startingwithjesus.com. Let's pray. Thank you, dear Jesus, so much that you have been with us. Help us to start our days with you and help us when everything goes wrong to still trust in you, just like Joseph did. Help us to be faithful like Joseph. We love you, Lord, and we thank you so much that you are so good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.